Unit 8.3, Plane Strain Transformation. In this unit, we focused on the following outcome. Demonstrate the ability to transform stress and strain and find principal normal and shear stresses. In the previous lessons, we used the equations and more circle to transform plane stresses. In this lesson, we will focus on the following. Transform plane strain using general transformation equations. Determine principal strains using the equations, determine maximum in-plane shear strain using the equations, and use more circle to transform strains and find principal normal strains and maximum in-plane shear strains. So we're going to use two methods to transform strains. And the methods we use for strain transformation are analogous to those we used for stress transformations, which are using the direct equations or by using more circle. First, let's look at the plane stress transformation equations. These were the general equations for transforming stress through some arbitrary rotation angle theta. If we compare the plane strain transformation equations, we find that they are very similar. Where we had sigma x in the plane stress transformation equations, we now have epsilon x, normal strain in the x direction. Where we had sigma y in the plane stress transformation equations, we now have epsilon y, normal strain in the y direction. And where we had shear stress in the xy plane, we now have shear strain in the xy plane, divided by 2. And so we see that the equations are very similar. Just as we had in-plane principal stresses and equations for finding the in-plane principal stresses and the rotation angle to uh, find those stresses. We also have in-plane principal strains. You can see the equations are very similar, again replacing sigma x and sigma y with epsilon x and epsilon y, and replacing tau xy with gamma xy but divided by 2. For an equation for angle of rotation for our principal strains, also a similar equation. Notice that the division by 2 in the denominator is not present in the principal strain equation. And as we had maximum in-plane shear stress for plane stress, we will have maximum in-plane shear strains. And once again, we see that we've replaced sigma x and sigma y with epsilon x and epsilon y. And tau xy is replaced with gamma xy divided by 2. Notice that this equation for maximum in-plane shear strain results in the maximum strain divided by 2. So this term will have to be multiplied by 2 to get the actual maximum in-plane shear strain. We also have the equation for finding the rotation angle, theta s, and also an equation for finding the average normal strains at the point of maximum in-plane shear strain. And as you can expect, because the equations for strain transformation are very similar to those for stress transformation, we can also use more circle to transform plane strain. Typically, we are given a condition for normal strain in the x and y directions and shear strain in the xy plane. And we want to transform the element that's experiencing these strains to find the maximum normal strains, which would be our principal strains, and our maximum in-plane shear strain. The first thing we will do is draw our axes. Notice that the horizontal axis is our normal strain axis, and the positive direction is to the right. Our vertical axis is then our shear strain axis, and notice that it is positive, pointing down. And we will plot shear strain divided by on this axis. Next we will plot the center of the circle and we will use this equation to do so. It is the average of the normal strains. The next step is to plot the x face where we will plot epsilon x and gamma xy divided by 2. Paying careful attention to sign. The next step will be to plot the y face which is epsilon y and negative gamma xy divided by 2. And those two points are opposite points on Moore's circle. They're exactly 180 degrees apart. So we can find the radius of Moore's circle by taking the distance from the center to either of the two points. We'll use this right triangle to find the length of the radius. We know that the long dimension on this triangle is 
gamma xy divided by 2. The short dimension is half the distance between epsilon x and epsilon y. The radius can then be computed as shown. Once we have our radius, we can draw the circle. Where the circle intersects the horizontal axis, that's where we have our maximum normal strains in the positive sense and also in the negative sense. And to find those, we will simply take the center of our circle and add the radius to get epsilon 1, or to take the center of the circle and subtract the radius to find epsilon 2. And here's the equation for in-plane principal strains. Maximum in-plane shear strain divided by 2 can be found as the radius of the circle. And it's here at the bottom of the circle. Now the rotation angles can also be found using more circle. Here is the x face shown with this green dot. And if we were to rotate the element to reach our first principal strain, we would rotate it in the counterclockwise direction through this angle 2 theta p. Remember the 2 is there because the angles on Moore's circle are double that of reality. One way we can see this is that the x face and y face plot on Moore's circle 180 degrees apart, while in reality the x and y directions are only 90 degrees apart. So we can find this angle 2 theta p by using the same right triangle we used before. Tangent of 2 theta p is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. If we're going to take our x face and rotate it to the condition of maximum in-plane shear strain, we would go through this angle here, 2 theta s. And we could find the angle 2 theta s as tangent of 2 theta s is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. The negative sign shows that we are rotating in the opposite direction uh, that we rotated to find our principal strains. And we're done.